Hey guys, Ivan here, and in this video we're gonna make a top 5 list of bodybuilders who made the biggest transformations in their bodybuilding careers. At first I wanted to name this video bodybuilders when they were natural, but I wasn't sure when they were actually natural. Just them saying that doesn't really make it true. Not necessarily. But if I heard that somebody actually was natural, if that's what they claim, I'm gonna say it in the video. And here you can see a couple of honorable mentions before the list actually starts. There is so many great transformations and this should be like a top 30. But I want to make it shorter for you guys because you don't want to watch an hour long video. These bodybuilders here before the list actually starts are all phenomenal bodybuilders. They all have amazing physiques and they all made great transformations. But I just chose another Top five. So let's go with spot number five and that's gonna be your current Mr. Olympia, Sean Rudin. Sean is actually one of those bodybuilders that stayed natural for a really long time. He actually did start competing very young. He started competing when he was 17. Now he's 44, so that's 27 years of competing. But it wasn't until later on that he actually started using stuff and that's when his body exploded. He was natural for a long time, worked hard, and then when he started using stuff, he exploded and became one of the top bodybuilders in the world. I think it was in his late 30s when he started using the stuff. That's what they say. That's what they say. I'm not sure about it, but that's what they say. He is also known for making crazy transformations year after year because he doesn't like being on juice. He likes to take his year off of it, pretty much the whole off season. that's what he says. And then when the competition comes, four months before, three months before, he starts using stuff. And that's where he makes crazy transformations. He changes his body totally, which we saw this year uh, more evidently than ever, because all eyes are on him because he's the Mr. Olympia. And at his guest posing at Pittsburgh Pro, he looked much fatter than he is right now. Only two months later, he looks lean and almost ready for the stage. Sean Roden maybe deserves even higher place on this list simply because he keeps making transformations even right now. But would you say that his transformation is crazier than that of Flex Wheeler? I definitely do not think so. This transformation of Flex Wheeler, the way he looked when he was younger, is super crazy. I mean, he was so skinny that imagine if he came to you for advice. To you, yes. And he asked you, please tell me this and be honest. Do I have the genetic potential to be the best bodybuilder in the world? And you had to give an answer. And you have to be honest. What would you tell him? Would you tell him, yes, you can be the best bodybuilder in the world? I don't think so. I don't think I would say that, if I had to be honest. But I would be wrong, and you would be wrong as well. And he came so close to becoming the best bodybuilder in the world. But many, many consider him the greatest of all time. Many consider him a better bodybuilder than Dorian Yates. Not me though, but many people do. Not so many of them consider him the rightful winner of the 1998 Mr. Olympia, because Ronnie absolutely dominated that stage. It wasn't even close. But still, still, he was able to make a crazy transformation, being a skinny little dude to becoming one of the greatest of all time. Another reason why he is on this list instead of some other people, is because he was able to make transformations after his retirement. So he had some kidney issues. I believe he had a kidney transplant surgery. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure that's what happened. You can see a huge scar on the left side of his stomach. So that's probably the reason why he wasn't able to train hard or to train at all, or to eat right, or to eat at all. And for that reason, actually he was probably eating, but not properly because he got fat. And you can see him on the right, uh, how he looked at that point. But then later, in 2016, he made a transformation, a crazy one. So he made a comeback. He competed against the other younger guys. He took 15th place, but in classic physique, Mr. Olympia. He did great. He looked awesome, especially compared to what he looked like before. It wasn't enough for him to place highly, but the transformation he was able to make is outstanding. And he did not compete in the Open, but somebody did do that, just that, in the same year, 2016, and that's Kevin Livroni, who is taking place number 3 on my top 5 list. I mean, guys, this is unreal. This is unreal. Look at how skinny he was back then. Look at how skinny he was and how big he got. 
This is crazy transformation. This is insane. I think this is the same situation with the Flex Wheeler, for example. Who would think that this is going to be the top bodybuilder, one of the greatest of all time? But, you know, we cannot be sure how old he was in this photo right here. He could be like 8 years old, <laughs> but probably not. He's probably like 16, maybe 17, something like that. But anyways, to pack this much muscle in any time, really. So he takes place number 8 on the list. And there is another reason why he's on this list. And that's because he was known for making crazy transformations every single year. This picture right here on the left is basically how he looked like out of the stage for the majority of the year. Until 1992, he was training very hard and he was very devoted to bodybuilding. In that year, he had a pack tear and afterwards he was never as focused as he was before. He was traveling around the world, he had a band. He was singing, I believe, and maybe playing another instrument, I'm not sure exactly, but he was having a lot of fun throughout the whole year. And four months, only four months before the competition, he would start using the stuff and training very hard and eating properly and everything and he would look like this picture on the right so he was able to make crazy transformations every single year out of the gym out of the competition season he looked like an average show he looked like a some guy who lifts some guy who trains occasionally basically with a bit better genetics but on the stage he was one of the greatest of all time and this right here is the reason why he is higher on the list, uh, higher than the two guys that I previously mentioned. So at first he was a skinny kid, then he became one of the greatest bodybuilders of all time, then he remained that while looking like an average Joe in the offseason, and then once he retired in the early 2000s, he took a break from everything for nearly 15 years. And then in 2016, he made a comeback, and it was a really successful comeback. Unlike Flex Wheeler, Kevin competed against the big guys. He tried to place high the Mr. Olympia, and many people predicted him actually winning the show. This was the time when he gained a lot of popularity. I followed his transformation very carefully, and I noticed that many younger guys who did not know much about Kevin Leveroni started following him then. So his business grew and everything, but the transformation he was able to make he was really good. His lower body wasn't up to par, but his upper body, especially from the front, packed not that much, and that's the reason why he didn't place high the Mr. Olympia, but his front upper body looked really impressive. As you can see, he's holding his ground against Cedric McMillan, who is currently one of the top pros, and he actually is taking place number two on my list. Yep, yep, that's right. And I'm sure many of you are scratching your heads and uh, thinking, why is he better than Flex? Why is he better than Sean or Kevin? What is the reason? Well, yeah, he was very skinny when he started, as you can see on the picture number left. But he was pretty jacked. He didn't look horrible. He didn't look super skinny. Yeah, he was skinny compared to what he is today. But still, he was a tall guy. It's not very easy to pack on the mass when you are as tall as he is. And that's my height, so trust me, I know. And the reason why I actually put him so high on this list is because the way he looked when he was 26 years old. Kevin, Sean, or Flex... They did look skinny when they were young, but when they were really young, when they were in their teens, when they were 16, 17, 15. But here, on this photo right here, you can see Cedric when he was 26. 26, guys. That's three years older than me. He was 26 here, and he did not look like anything he looks now. He did not look promising at all. I mean, Lee Haney retired when he was like 28 or something. Arnold also retired when he was, I think, 30. He retired once in 75, but then again in 1980. So many bodybuilders, especially old school bodybuilders, retired before they hit 30. But this is Hedrick at 26. And at this point in time, he was not conditioned, he was not massive, he did not show any promise at all. And this is really motivating me, personally, because I'm his height, and uh, I don't look like a promising professional bodybuilder right now, nothing like that. But when I look at Cedric here, he also doesn't look super impressive. I can compare his physique to mine and I can see that he wasn't much better than I am right now. And I'm sure that many of you guys who would like to become professional bodybuilders someday 
and don't look promising right now, don't have any contracts, are not winning shows every single time you show up, can look at this photo right here of Cedric. See how he looked like when he was 26. 26, yeah. And look at how he looks right now. If this doesn't motivate you and makes you stick to your game, stick to your plan and actually fulfill your dreams, nothing will. Nothing will because this is amazing. Look at how good he looks like right now. Compared to what he looked like when he was 26, this is insane. And this whole transformation sends a very good message and that is never give up, guys. Never give up. Cedric never gave up and he became one of the best bodybuilders in the world. Anyways, talking about the best bodybuilders in the world, let's mention one of the best bodybuilders in the history of the world and that's gonna be Dorian Yates who takes first place on my list. Now guys, please don't take this list too personally, don't get caught up with numbers and tell me who was supposed to be first place, second place or third place or whatever, it doesn't really matter, what matters is who is on the list and who is not. So you can focus on that if you want to hate on something. But basically Dorian is my favorite bodybuilder and that's not why he's on the list. The reason why he's on the list is firstly, because he made a huge transformation when he was very young. He didn't do bodybuilding until he was 21, I believe. He ended up in jail for like six months. He was basically living on the streets. He was living by himself and he was 15 or 16 when his mother left and he stayed in the city in the Birmingham. And then later when he got out of prison, he started basically doing bodybuilding, living in his own apartment and he transformed his body so fast that when he was 18, you wouldn't be sure he ever had any potential to become a bodybuilder at all. But then when he was 23, in like two years, you would be sure that he has the potential to be one of the greatest of all time. So it wasn't that much of a transformation as much as it was fast. You know, because he wasn't training, he wasn't eating properly or anything, he was naturally strong, he had a good physique, but what he was able to make in such a short time, in such a short time span, but that is not really the reason why he is number one on the list. The reason why he is number one on the list is because he is the original mass monster. He is the first bodybuilder ever that took bodybuilding to that level. He took it to another level, he made up basically huge transformation of the sport, pretty much, not only of his body. And afterwards, everybody follows him. Some people blame him for destroying the sport, actually, but not me. I like the sport, what it is today. And uh, he was the one to do it first. So when he was basically packing on all that muscle in 1992 and 1993, he couldn't have taken anybody's advice because he was first in those waters. Nobody else has been there before. He was first, so when he took it to another level, everybody followed him, everybody copied him, everybody did what he did, and then the whole sport changed. So Dorian's transformation is not only his transformation, his transformation transformed the whole sport of bodybuilding, actually. So that's about it for this video, guys. If you enjoyed it, make sure to like it. And if you want to see more content like this, please subscribe to my channel. All the best, guys. Bye-bye.